Johnson's Pond, oh boy. The Dan York State of Mind program is brought to you at part by Lookout Rhode Island and Taco Comfort Solutions. Now, full disclosure, I have not yet been to the pond. I'm getting that out there. Uh, work schedules and everything else, I, but I'm going to the pond, uh, if I can find the pond, because I think it's pretty well enclosed in a beautiful burb of Coventry. Uh, but I've certainly read enough, seen enough, and had enough conversations to have a broad understanding of what the controversies are here. And I welcome you in tonight uh, to hear at least one side of the story uh, because, uh, well, it's going to take a while for us to, on this platform, dig through a little bit. Uh, I have two fine guests that you'll be introduced to in just a second. If you're not aware, this Johnson, well, you know what, let me run the story. Here's the headline, because if I try to explain all of this, uh, it, it, I'll take up half the show. Uh, Johnson's Pond owners demand town remove residence docks. Huh? Here's a little background. The property owner of this floating dock says it's been on the water of Johnson's Pond for eight years. It wasn't a surprise for this property owner when he saw his name on a list made by the pond's owners, Socia Holdings LLC, taking issue with the structures. Yeah, I definitely think that the Socias and Social Holding are trying to look for any any little way to to just be a problem. In April, this letter was sent by Socia Holdings notifying the town they are in violation of the lease. The lessee being the town, the letter says, should have not allowed structures like docks be built on properties without the owner's written consent based on that lease. The Socias inherited the agreement when they purchased Johnson's Pond's water flow rights and dam about three years ago. Town leaders aren't commenting publicly because of ongoing litigation. The Socias are suing the state over a law that passed last year, giving DEM some power over the water levels. But it's tough also because we don't really hear anything from the town because the town's trying to keep everything private. Uh, but, you know, fingers crossed that this is able to be resolved. Socia's attorney Patrick Doherty says more properties will likely be added to the list, adding in a statement in part, the town of Coventry is directly ignoring the lease and its very own ordinances and building codes. If the town had performed its obligations, then the docks would have been properly permitted. Uh, I'd love to have the lawyer on the scene, but um, I think what I'm going to do is let the uh, not the plaintiffs, but the defendants or the victims, perhaps. I'm not sure, Lou. How would I how would I describe that? The uh, the, the folks who uh, and Mark can uh, can certainly explain the the Civic Association. I think probably feels like they've been victimized by what's gone on on the pond. Let me introduce my my friends here. Mark Lemoy is the president of the Johnson Pond Civic Association. He was kind enough to spend about a half an hour with me on the radio the other day and uh, gave me a good understanding of where the Civic Association is. And my old friend, Lou Raptakis, state senator extraordinaire from the region, comes with, of course, pictures and documents and everything else. Yeah, absolutely. And the only thing he didn't come with is a slice of pizza because that, uh, uh, that, that, that day is over. You look a That's lot right. more relaxed than you know, running the business and and, and doing the people's business. Good to At, see you. After 40 years. Yes. So. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mark, this, this situation, in a nutshell, if you had to explain to somebody you just met at a coffee shop, you know, what the, what the controversy and the dilemma and perhaps the victimization for the 600 ballpark homeowners or property owners around this large body of water that's referred to as a pond, but which is really kind of a lake, uh, is what? Well, the controversy is uh, ownership. Um, water levels have not been maintained as they have been historically for many, many years, 50 years, 70 years. Well, not to interrupt you, but the controversy really is the water level. Correct. Yeah, the, the ownership impacts the water level. Correct. We can talk about the historical travel of that. But the, 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 the moral of the story is, I, I don't know if, Eric, if you can see this, but uh, why don't you give me a one shot here and just uh, come on up real quick. I mean, oh, my hair's in a great place there. Uh, this is, this doesn't look like a healthy lake or no. a healthy pond. Those are fish nests that are about to be exposed due to the low water levels. Okay, so that's kind of the eyesore that you see from time to time or regularly or when? Mostly during the summer months. So historically, this pond has been drained during the winter time to uh, 
freeze out the aquatic invasive species. And then in the summertime, starting in April, the summertime months right through the end of September, the water level's been full. Um, that was prior to 2020, prior to Social Holdings purchasing uh, this dam and the uh, pond. Here's a good picture, very nice. All right, um, so the argument here is over the last few years, with the current ownership, the water levels have not been maintained to the satisfaction and to the quality of life of the people who live around it. That is correct. It's, that that's the essential historical levels. That's the essential nature of the conversation. Correct. Yes. And to just bring some context, Social Holdings, um, Doug Solsha, who is a local resident, acquired this water rights title property, which is the weirdest thing I've ever seen. That you can own the water and the operation of the dam. Uh, for $1.7 million a few years ago from the longtime owner operator or rights owner, which was a company called Aquidnik, correct? Correct. All right. Uh, Aquidnik wanted out of it. They were busy with other things. Do we know, Lou, what their motivation was? Well, I think they, the issue is they didn't need the water anymore to power. A, it was a uh, power plant where their uh, factories were downstream gotcha. in West Warwick, and they felt that it was time to uh, sell the 1.4 million was the water rights and I believe it's 50 acres below the dam so there's property below the dam mm. and then the other 300,000 which there was some folks did not want to buy the dam so for another 300,000 you can buy and control the water level so basically we we had I've lived in Coventry my entire life and I've never seen any problems with Johnson's Pond ever maybe one time with Quidnick where DEM jumped in immediately to uh, correct what Quidnick was trying to do. I think one time they tried to reduce the water level rights because Johnson's Pond is the eighth largest body of water in the state of Rhode Island, lake-wise, mm. pond-wise. So it's a huge, uh, massive area. There's fireworks shows, there's the Johnson's Pond ski show, there's a DEM uh, boat dock ramp where you can go fishing, mm -hmm. and it comes down from the uh, Big River Reservoir parts of that so stuff. it's a pub there's a public use. exactly exactly correct and this and yeah. there's and there's a the public use is written in or historically um understood or define that mark what, what the, the general assembly created the quidnick reservoir johnson's pond back in 1870 that's very important for to know. public use and for the mill owners downstream in west Wark and coventry to use as a water supply to operate their mills okay provide so, a constant water source throughout the entire year depending on drought they were always able to keep jobs it was for the public good got it both ends but the idea that the actual water rights and the use of the dam is a carved out ownership opportunity or asset is weird yeah, it was <laughs> correct. And the le the <laughs> legislature, is, it not, is it not weird? It is weird. Okay. And the legislature gave I knew I could get you to smile, Mark, because I know you're on a, you're, I know this is a very stressful conversation for you, but, uh, and you're a pretty serious guy. But it is the, it's, it's a weird deal. Correct. Admitted? The legislature gave them that power in the 1800s to right. uh, power these mills. Uh, they needed that water power, and they needed to be able to do w with it what they needed when they needed it. So, gosh almighty, Lou, we have another one of these obsolete needs, uses, Absolutely. not unlike fire districts, which I have been harping about since the day I visited Rhode Island, which is almost a quarter century sure. ago, to say, wait a second, how come I'm paying a property tax to a separately owned, separately voted on, this fiefdom, and you get your own situations in Coventry and have had uh, your history with seven fire districts down to four, and I don't know what kind of efficiencies Hopefully we got one. from that, you know, right? So, so we've got a lot of old stuff. Uh, in what I would say would be governmental or organizational infrastructure. Correct. Um, Coventry Sewer Program, which was another mess, which we had to jump in again with three pieces of legislation to rectify that issue. Right. So, again, so because the structure is weird and the system um, doesn't seem to be handling this new ownership dilemma well, we're in courts and we're in, in, in we're in a rock and a hard place and general assembly and we have the quality of life affected and people at each other's, at each other's throats uh, sure. no doubt right all right we have to pause when we come back we're going to kind of line up with the specific um, 
you know, what's happening now, and what is, if at all, the solution to this? Stay with us. So there you have the beautiful Johnson's Pond uh, and the dam that has now been, from a property rights point of view, been purchased in the last few years by this company, Socha, and uh, no longer operated by Aquidnik, which was the, the original entity. And, uh, first of all, a couple of factual assertions. We didn't get a chance to put this up on the screen, but I will tell you that at least when you, when you look at this, uh, Eric, if you just kind of give me a, a real quick flash, um, this is a graph. You've seen graphs before, and I'm going to let Mark uh, explain what the, dra what the graph says. You are trying to um, prove with data that the water levels, which were seemingly pretty consistent under Quidnick, uh, have not been so under the new ownership in the last few years, correct? That's correct. Um, I've lived down that pond since 1977, and we've never had, we've had periods of drought here and there, but the water level's never gone down this far as these graphs show. This water data was sent to us by Quidnick Reservoir Association on a weekly report every Friday. Um, we have the data that shows water level full starting April 1st through the end of September. And you feel like, uh, I, I'm, I'm probably a stupid question, they were a good neighbor? A good landlord. A good landlord. Yes. Got you. Okay. Uh, a, a landlord to the town. Correct. Because the town is the lessee uh, renting this space to be able to have access for its town's people and anybody else who's visiting That's right. on the water, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, the lawyer for Socia, who we'll invite uh, at a later date, sooner or later I hope, would assert that it's been, uh, other than for drought and a couple of other things, the consistency has been maintained. Your graphs show something very different. Completely different. Water level is erratic, goes up, down, those gates are open and closed constantly. We get rain in, he lets it right out, instead of letting it just naturally go over spillway. Hmm. Spillway is the uh, mechanism on the dam that protects flooding. It just spills right over, and that's where we've always been. You would assert, Senator, that there's motive on the part of the water rights owner, Mr. Socia, for what you guys would say is flirting with that water level. What sure. would it be? Well, we buys this entity for 1.4 million plus 300,000 for the dam rights and uh, wants to charge 100, wants to sell it to the town for 100 million and wants to charge every resident $2,000 a year just to use the pond. Uh, and then this situation where we have the last three years that Johnson's Pond cannot be used for any of the above that we mentioned, he's constantly emptied out the water level. You can see another lake, Lake Tioga and Coventry, a small lake which never has a problem. Again, it's got its own dam, it's full, people are fishing, people are, are recreation, and he's doing it for his own personal gain. Now, again, uh, there's a lease involved. Was the lease properly written? Uh, maybe that was problematic. Meaning the lease between, the former lease between Quidnick and the town that he assumed with the acquisition, right. correct? And he's used these loopholes to, again, for his uh, personal gain. We jumped in in the Loopholes meaning? Again, having the issue of raising and lowering the level, emptying out the the, uh, the lake where people cannot use it, uh, cannot use it for fishing, recreation, environmental issue, which is very important. We had the Attorney General visit uh, Coventry last September when we walked before the dam, literally walked on the lake. It was so dry, it was unbelievable. And we had to act in the General Assembly to give DEM now the oversight over any pond or lake greater than 1,400 square acres, which is the biggest ones in the state. That law was written uh, broadly, but with this controversy in mind, sure, correct? Sure, absolutely. And this is why the lawyer for Socia is suing, suggesting that the legislature has stepped in to resolve what is a property rights issue by he would say, unconstitutional measures. Well, we'll let the judge make that decision. We also see that there's a lot of environmental issues. We've written so many laws in the state of Rhode Island to protect the environment, 
to protect animal species, to protect fish, whatever. We've seen these violations day in and day out for the last three years. So we have to act, and we, we feel the general assembly, since we created Quinnick Reservoir, we should still have the oversight. We had the same issue up in uh, Pasco Lake, was it, uh, Echo Lake? Mm -hmm. Again, it was almost a similar uh, issue. So the state, I'm not a legal scholar, but crafting that legislation, passing it by both assemblies, signing by the governor, uh, and I think we've done the right thing. So we'll let the judge make that decision. So among, amongst the, I want to talk about potential solution in the next segment, but amongst the, the other dangling participles is actually the, the, the genesis of Anita's story at the top, which is this, Mr. Sosha has made a demand about the docks at, at this point. Uh, and reportedly, this, the town of Coventry, as a lessee, he would assert he's not acquired the proper insurance uh, for coverage for somebody slipping and falling or splitting their head open on a boat or on a dock. And so whether that is a, a technical opportunity in the lease for the objective that you're suggesting or whether that's a legitimate liability worry, it seems to be an, an unresolved matter, which as we tape on Thursday is reportedly in court right now, correct? Correct. Mark? It's in court this afternoon. Yeah. Do you as a homeowner and civic association leader recognize that liability concern? Do you, do you see it as legitimate? On behalf of social holdings, it may be legitimate, but um, we don't see, you know, how the town could not be insured all these years. The trust insures the town, so it's up to a court to decide whether the technicality and the language of how they're named as additionally insured is what they're contesting in court. Okay, so, so all right, so it is, it is ambiguous yes. at this point to determine on this television set at least whether the claim that the water rights holder has that the insurance is not adequate is true. Correct. That's what's in court. All right. So there's all they want to do is fish and have a party on the on the lake, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, it's just cr the crazy stuff. When we come back, what I would suggest seems to be the solution. But you know, well, why not? Stay with us. It really is a, a pretty setting, no doubt. It reminds me of uh, the lake I kind of grew up in in Brookfield, Connecticut, Candlewood Lake. There's a which is much bigger. Um, Comparatively, it would be a great lake to, to Johnson's Pond, but uh, there's nothing like the quality of life on the lake, and tis the season. Uh, before I get to my grand solution and, and end this controversy all by myself, uh, what's life like right now? I mean, it's been cool weather, and it's not great for boating and swimming and all that kind of stuff for anybody, but what's, what's the status right now of the recreational use of the, of the pond? So right now we're down one foot from full level, and uh, residents are hesitant to put their recreational boats in sure uh, after seeing what's going on in the last three summers not everyone owns a pickup truck that can pull their boat in and out every time social opens the dam up um, you know it's a considerable expense for them to hire people and then the local companies that pull these boats out can't do a thousand boats all in you know if within a day's time legacy ownership I'm guessing around the pond correct people have owned Most homes for a long time most are generational hand down properties. What's the what's the political tenor Lou of of this in in, in this sense? It seems there's 600 ish homes and, and you have uh, almost 75 percent of the homeowners yes. in your association. Correct. Right. So you've got a very active participation in your association. So clearly there's consensus, and all one has to do is peruse social media to see the Hatfield and McCoy type of arguments that are going on, which I'll leave out of this conversation for now. Sure. Um, Coventry's a big town. Is there a sentiment around the town that is empathetic or even sympathetic to these folks' issue? Or is it this kind of, you know, off controversy that is not mainstream in conversation? Unified. All eight state legislators, whether they even, if they represent Johnson's Pond or they don't, are behind because the, the constituents are behind it and absolutely. they're bothered by it. Absolutely, you can have uh, uh, represent Tom Del Rey who doesn't border the pond. Do you agree, Mark, that that, that this this is no. a this is a town wide all for one type of thing? So I can't speak on behalf of the other residents. I agree, it's a town wide issue. I mm -hmm. mean, uh, just the tax 
space. So here my question is, why not a town solution? It seems to me, even the lawyer said to me last week on the radio that there's a couple of options here. One, form a new district for the acquisition of this property. Now, let's not kid ourselves, it's not going to be a hundred million dollars. Right. Uh, but uh, and or eminent domain, which I'm never a big fan of, but which would get him a price and get him out of here. Because it seems to me that this is an archaic system built for another use, meaning energy from the dam, which is no longer necessary and obsolete. The formula doesn't work. And because the town's a lessee, the town, to, to me, either has to be a municipal owner or a district of like-minded, well-intended residents need to form an entity to be the operator. But then it's going beyond Coventry. It's a statewide issue. All the legislators, all legislators from Warwick, East Greenwich, uh, uh, Newport, everybody's supporting this concept. What Which we concept? Did, what we did last year by having DEM oversight a lot of these uh, bodies of water because this is clearly what yeah, I've seen the last few years. Uh, you, you, know, you know what, the power of the legislature, yeah. Lou, might, might, might be uh, your, your comfort zone, but this guy bought something under, under a certain set of rules and regulations, and he's got you by the, uh, you know, well, it's, a, it's a family show, but it seems like he's, you know, sure. you know what I'm saying, Mark? Right, but the state is just asking for him to apply for a permit to operate the dam. Uh, same as you know, I would have to apply for a permit under if I under under what under what water level maintenance uh, guarantees? Uh, it's historical. Permit is historical water levels based upon DEM's criteria. Yeah, I would say that you would be uh, regardless of what you write and what you restrict and what you renew. It seems to me that when you've got an actor who has his own vision of and motivation from his acquisition, that you need to take him out. You need to exactly. take him out. You need it, to fix the problem and not build regulation around it. I have the last, uh, last 20 seconds. It, it did. Basically, he threatens he's going to bulldoze the dam down. Uh, I mean, you can't. You've got an environmental issue. And this well, there's, there's restraining ponds orders for lakes, certain. Right. I mean, a judge would stop that. Exactly. But there's other ponds and lakes throughout the state that this could also apply. So any sentiment at all, Mark, in town to do what I'm suggesting needs to be done? So we don't know what the town is doing. We know they've appropriated funds to And by the way, experts. I can't get them to respond to a single question. The local officials have been hiding under a rock, and they're irresponsible in not having a public conversation about this and I'm disappointed over that. I wish we had more time um, but we'll continue and on the radio as well. Thank you. Uh, good luck. Good to see Thank you. you. Thank you. You bet. Uh, final word when we come back. Jim. We'll try to get the other side here soon enough. You have a great weekend. Good night.